Just another episode. Just another episode. It's the first one in 2016. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar, brought to you by At the Bar Podcast. We are here recording live at World of Beer UCF. Once again, I'm your host, Mike, co-hosting. He's now more famous after what happened last night. Apparently. (laughs) Apparently. Those four beers really killed him. We have Jeff. What's up, guys? Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. How was your uh, New Year? Oh, it's good. I was supposed to be working, and then I didn't. (laughs) And then uh, I had four beers, and apparently that makes you famous. I don't know how. It makes you more famous. You're already famous. Everybody said I was pretty loose. I mean, you walked in today, and everyone's shaking your hand. Like, oh, man, you're late. Oh, I can't believe it. You're late after New Year's Eve. (laughs) (laughs) I'm surprised there's so many people here. I am too. It's actually. a good surprise. Yeah, I'm very, very happily surprised. I wasn't expecting much, but yeah. it's well, we're pumping, good. man. So we have a special episode, like every episode, I should say. Uh, about a month ago, I went to Tarpon Springs to brew beer for the Deland Craft Beer Festival with the infamous Preston from the Beer Chasers. As we talked, I think the last episode, the episode before, a couple episodes we, ago, we, we talked a lot about him. So I brewed a beer. He actually just texted me saying it's fucking awesome. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll bring it on once once he comes here. He'll, he's coming to the show, Jeff. In oh, February. awesome! Good. So we're gonna have a so invite was extended and was he extended. Accepted he it. accepted and he's like, "Well, I'll be up for the Delance, so we can do something that Friday." Cool. So we'll be having him in a couple weeks or a month or so. But um, went down. He always gives me his home brews to try because he's a he's a fucking swell guy. So this episode, we were trying our New Year's. We're trying new beers. So new off, new beers. Happy new beers. So kicking off. We'll do this one first. Kicking off 2016, we have fresh homebrews. We have two of them. And I, I kind of wish David Boston was here. Yeah. But well, the show must go on. I mean, none of these have an untapped rating, though. So <laughs> Yeah, it's not above a four. <laughs> but first one here we're going we're gonna to tap into, and Jeff is kind of a little sluggish, but hopefully he'll, he'll wake up. It's, oh, I'm sure a beer or two will wake me up. <laughs> it's Preston's Gingerbread Brown. Now, he gave it to me. He gave me a little side note that he wants me to mention on air. Uh, he's, he wants to say it needs more gingerbread. Needs more gingerbread. Mm, so he wants to. So we'll give him a little bit of leeway there in grading it. But he just got a new system in. So this is his latest homebrew on his new system. That's not the one we brewed a month ago. So Is this a recipe he made up or is this, this something is he recipe. already had? This is a recipe. Uh, from what I recall, his Matt... I, I believe is a brewer for in Mosquito County. I think he gave him a recipe. Okay. And Preston just tweaked it to make it okay. his own. So it's not an exact copy, but the Preston, gingerbread trend was big last year. A lot of gingerbread beers came out. So very much so, yeah. Um, some of them really hit the nail on the head. Some of them kind of were like pretty lackluster. We'll but see what this one's got to offer. We're pouring it now. Colors right. Head head looks a little off white. But uh, as we go into the smell here. It's carbonated, yeah. which is always a plus for homebrews. Dip my nose in the in the foam here. I really get graham cracker on the smell. It's light. Yeah, very it's light. Not, it's not overpowering, which I think is a good thing. Color is good. Graham cracker. I get a little bit of like a nutmeg spice. It's actually really, really good. It has a very light flavor. It's not overly powerful on any. This is really of, good. Yeah, this is solid. He he gave it to me kind of like a little upset. Like, yeah. This sucks. Don't I mean? Don't bash it too hard. What's no, the quote? Really like good. you know, you're you're on your 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 worst, worst qu- critic or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he gave it to me kind of like a little disappointed. He's like, here, this is it. First beer on my new system. It's all right. You know, this is really good. I really like it. I generally like it. Nice solid flavor. It's light, drinkable. It's not yeah overpowerful, yeah. sweet or gingerbready or my, I don't even know what the word would be for it that. It almost tastes like an Oktoberfest. A little bit, but then it has... Or a Marzen, if you're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fancy, huh? <laughs> you fancy. It's good. I really like it. Um, it's crisp. It's light, easily I, drinkable, but still has, that, like you said, almost graham crackery Graham finish. cracker. I get yeah. a little bit of vanilla, spice, nutmeg. I don't... It's really hard. For me, it's really hard to pick up ginger in beer. It's usually it, overpowering it, it's and everything. It's either really overpowering or it's just so light that you... I mean, you don't really pick it up. Mainly, it's mainly an aroma. Ginger's like a new buzzword, too. Yeah. Just everything has ginger in it. Did you, I mean, did you try that ginger cider? I had woodchucks, yeah. It was, I mean... So much ginger. Oh, my I, God. T- I had it, and I was like, it just tastes like a sweeter woodchuck. 
I don't really pick up. You on don't get the ginger. I don't really. I don't. I don't get the ginger. But Your taste this is really good. I actually don't want to give it away. <laughs> it's solid. Yeah, it's, it's really, a really good. Solid beer. Um, normally we do. I know we've never rated beers here on the show yet, but normally we have a we have a one to well zero to ten scale with decimals. So um, you know, nine a nine a nine to a ten is you know the exquisite. heady topper, exquisite top shelf, something that if you see it, you automatically get it. Uh, you know the the eights to nines or the Bs is something you would probably prefer to get. You know Cs, Ds, Fs. Nib smugglers. Nib smugglers would be for me a B, unless it has sediment in it. But Funky Buddha fixed that for me. Thanks, Funky Buddha. But for me, I actually I like this a lot more than I was expecting. So I'd probably give it like an an eight point seven. I'd a high B. Really? For what it is. For what it is. It's, this it's, is up it's there a brown. in the same this is in the same level as like Nib Smuggler and Yeah. Really? Yeah. I put I put it in the same category. I mean it's a brown. It ale. is good. It is it's a brown. Re- ale. It's really good. I don't think I'd put it up that high, but I'd give it like a I'd give it a B for sure. For sure. This is really good. I <laughs> I might just drink the rest of this. <laughs> we could split it. <laughs> End of the episode, guys. We're not actually we're trying other beers. We're just drinking this one. No, you know what? This is actually really solid. This is really good. Now, would you think he would? He should make this again. I think that's an easy answer. I think yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The thing that's funny about some of these beers is you get overly critical about them being a home brew, and you're like, you want to oh, expect man, is- so much out of a home brew that you yeah. wouldn't expect out of a can. So, like, I like to imagine if I got a can of beer out of the cooler and I ordered it, and it was poured into a glass, and I drank, and it was this juice, this yeah. exact beer, yeah. but it was packaged nicely from a reputable brewery, right? Would I think that this beer was good? And absolutely, absolutely. I would. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you put if you put Preston's Brewery on it, put it in a can or put it on tap and, and sold it at a bar, I, I definitely think this would sell. Yeah. And and this is something, I, I mean, he should definitely keep the recipe. I know, he, I know he has a recipe, but he should make it again. But with homebrew, it's like it may not be the same beer next time because everything's not computerized. You got it, yeah. But the recipe's good, though. I mean, this is his first batch on his new system. Normally, you expect What's the to new system of, consist of. Is, uh, and you have any of the details? Uh, nah, he, I mean, he can probably just fucking mix. He has. I know he has a, like a like a hose that goes through that cools it instead of just you know dumping in the fucking copper, you know, to cool it down. Yeah, uh, it's more efficient. It takes less time. It's a lot less cleaning and whatnot. But um, I know most people they kind of start with a basic system and then they just replace parts out as that's they what go. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He has you know. It's a hobby. It's an expensive hobby, but you know he's re- slowly replacing. He still has plastic carboys, but he wants to get glass. Right. Um, but the cooling system is what he, he upgraded. He got insulated hose. What he does is just run the cool water through the beer, and it cools mm-hmm. it down. Excuse me, but this is really good. I mean, I, I yeah, this is really good. I, I'm very I like impressed it a lot. with it. Good job, Preston. You you killed it with that one. So that's really good. I actually now we got it. Now we got to see if this other one holds up now. So the next one... We on, started high. We started really high. I, he was like, oh, it needs more gingerbread. So I'm like, let's do the shittier one first. But this is the, how I was wrong. <laughs> so this one, it's his Belgian double or a Belgian double. It is his Westmall clone. Is that how you, That's proper term, Westmall? Yeah. yeah. So this one, he says to caution, open slowly. <laughs> oh, good. That's so, a, lots of carbonation yeah. in this guy. There it oh, is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and it's squirting everywhere. So it's carbonated. Really, <laughs> really reactive yeast. Yep. It is overflowing. And it just keeps going, huh? It just keeps going. All right, so points off. I mean, you did warn us, but holy shit. It's still foaming. Oh, so we're going we're gonna to sit on that. This one kind of looks bit. like you just put a Mentos in a Diet Coke. <laughs> Diet Coke <it> fucking <laughs> exploded. <laughs> It's still foaming. All right, so yeast strain, negative points. But um, I, that, I mean, while this is kind of running off here. It's a lot of, like, Flemish styles do that, too. If their yeast is over overreactive and super. I'm not sure if this one. I know, I know the beer we brewed for Deland, we, he had a yeast starter. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, it's like, a, it's like, a, like a, uh, a thing that runs a magnet, and it spins, like, the magnets in the beaker to stir to keep the yeast alive. Huh. So I'm not sure if you use that with this one. This one's like that. Right, this was a lot. This was a lot of carbonation. That's, that's cool. what it's we the use. Champagne of beers. The new champagne of beers. The new champagne of beers. Or we're just gonna fucking. There it is. 
Oh, wow. There it's it still is. going. It's still going. I, mean, I don't know how you're supposed to open a beer cautiously. That, that was about you as cautiously as, 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 as you can go. But um, that gingerbread's about, really good, though. Lose about, what, 10, 10% of the beer right there in foam. Yeah. That's all right. It's a bomber, so there's only the two of us. What's the but, ABV on any of these? Does I, don't, he know? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he told me. He'll but comment back on it, I'm sure. Yeah, he'll let us know. But he'll comment on it. I know when he was giving me these, <laughs> we were drinking. Um, we were doing a uh, – we, we revisited double, double IPAs. Mm -hmm. So he got his hands on some Heady Topper, and we compared the Heady Topper with our blind taste test of double IPAs, and the winner was the Lagunius Maximus. Yeah. So we were, we were drinking a lot. Well, we had that, and then we had a. Uh, it was Maximus, a bunch the of last shit. one that you tried, because that's probably when your your palate was torched, and you're like, "This is the best one ever." It actually <laughs> tasted the same as we remembered. Uh, I don't know. Have you had the Maximus? Yeah, I have. It's very malt forward compared to Pliny, which we had. Compared yeah, to that's crazy. Dogfish that like we had. Anitas wins with Pliny it was, it was and yeah. Dogfish. Head it was it was blind. So it was our you know honest answers, and I mean you can point out the fact that the three guys who drank it prefer malt. So right. obviously we're going to connect with that a lot more, but well, Hetty has a lot of malt backbone to it. We too. picked, uh, I think we picked Hetty over Lagunitas, um, just because I think Hetty is a lot more complex. Yeah. In terms of not only smell but flavor. Um, I guess we'll do mine for support. There's a lot of foam. Oh, well, it actually pour is really nice in a glass once the foam kind of dissipates a little bit look at that color great color almost caramelly and light brown hazy so i'm gonna preface this by saying i've never had west mall to my knowledge so i can't really compare it to west mall but uh, the colors the foam is a lot a lot like the gingerbread kind of like a an off cream like a yellow tinted white head's good once it dissipates, lingers. So carbonation is probably over carbonated, but it's still, it's still holding its head there. It's cloudy, light copper, light yeah. amber color. Have you smelled it yet? Yeah. It's biscuity as shit. I'm not. I'm not looking forward to Belgian right now. Well, let's let's, let's try. It. it smells a lot like biscuit and butter. Yeah. That's about it. It's that super bready, yeasty. Yeah, it's a Belgian. You can taste oh, the Belgian it's a in great it. Great flavor, though. Holy moly! I really like this one. Now, I've had Belgian doubles before, not recently. So, like, I style doesn't hate Belgians, and this is a good beer. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I can't compare it to any late Belgians I've had, but this is good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can t you can tell it's a Belgian oh, yeah. just by the yeast, that buttery, that biscuity yeast. Really bready. But it's light quality beer. It's a good. It's a good one. I like. Let me let me try it again here. I like it. I still get. I could taste a little of the carbonation on on the still a little fizzy. It's the kind of beer that makes you burp. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, at least you found the problem. You know, it's it's it was some either with the yeast or the carbonation to where it didn't settle off. But. It's an easy fix from what I've learned from home brewing and, and the brewing process. Carbonation is one of the easier things to fix unless you have, if you have bad hops or, or an infection in a yeah. huge batch of beer. That sucks. But carbonation, I think, is the easiest one to fix out of all of them. So which, what score would you give? Would this you one's give in the sevens somewhere. Sevens? Yeah. High sevens. Yeah, I, th I would agree with that, too. It's, it's not bad. I mean, it's Belgian. Like, Belgians are so plain to me. They all taste the same. They're so well, they used to be so popular, and because of the price point on them, and yeah. everybody kind of ventured into either real high malt beers or real high hop beers. Right. In America, we're hop heads or malt or malt men, you know. Yeah. Um, and they kind of just went away with the bready, yeasty taste, and, and yeah. it's not as popular anymore. But they're still good beers. I, I think it's because of the, they're too it's so expensive. Right, they are for I sure. Think that's the problem. Is there's there, the price points? I think. I mean, I would buy this at a bar, but I probably wouldn't pay no more than seven dollars for a pint. Right, right. That's it, and that's the problem with Belgians. Belgians are a pint a lot is, more. A pint is eleven dollars because oh, that's why not, it all comes oh, yeah. in a tulip because yeah. it's like you can't pint, even tulip snifter. I mean, the snifter of Belgium is what nine dollars. 
some, ten dollars. Some of them for some of them, yeah. yeah. I mean, for most of them, you're looking at a, if you're putting a snifter or a, or a tool up, you're looking at you know seven eight bucks for a lot of them. But snifters, a snifters ten bottles, ounce, bottles eleven is nine. You know, yeah. bottles nine to eleven dollars. Yeah. This is good. I would give a high seven to a C plus. Um, I think the recipe's spot on, minus the carbonation. Uh, drinkable is delicious. It's a really light double. Yeah. It has, a, I mean, not flavor wise, but as far as mouthfeel and, and right. drinkability. Yeah. Um, I'd be willing to guess somewhere in the six to six seven range percent, yeah. in percentage. Yeah. Um, it's not overly, overly high. It's not a very boozy taste, but right. then again, it could be one of those beers that completely masks it just yeah. because of the fact that it has such a light mouthfeel that right. you think it's lower. And then right. all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, 9%, what happened? Yeah. Um, but most doubles aren't that high anyway. They're somewhere right. in the seven to eight Yeah, they're, they're low, yeah. So would you, you think he should brew this again? Yeah. Assuming oh, he yeah. fixes the carbonation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, just for the bare minimum of the fact that you need to see if you can fix the carbonation because the, the recipe is good. It's Recipe's quality. Good. It's a quality product. And um, I actually like the color a lot. And as it sits and that haziness is kind of clearing up a little bit, it almost gets lighter. Yeah. And has a really nice, like, golden, caramelly, light brown look to it which color's really good on it yeah and the beer looks good it smells good and it tastes good there's no reason it, not to it, brew which it is again. funny because you don't really judge a beer on its color it's like oh okay it's now it's black okay taste is taste and aroma is where it's at but i think his color is very is very nice yeah is one of the the perks of of the belgian double see i i judge them on their color and i like stouts and imperial stouts so for me it's like is it black or really black but or red but i like them uh and and i'll judge a beer by the way it appears in a glass all the time right um and it's funny because like like i was saying before you imagine this beer coming in a bottle and you open it up is it worth drinking or not yeah you get so like screwed up by the brand or by the the brewery or who it is Hype. all or, the yeah. time yeah. where you're like why do we buy heady topper if maximus rates higher right why do we go and travel all over to get heady topper when you can get maximus everywhere yep um and it's because lagunitas is, is viewed as a uh, great craft brewery, but they're on the lower end of, of expensive beers, and it's just like okay, well they're they're cheap or not a right. not a worse product, but you right. view them on a lower scale than Hetty. Right. So it's like, you know, people are going to go all over the place to get Hetty Topper, and they can get identical beers from other breweries for cheaper. And I do the same thing. Oh yeah. You know, I yeah. sat here last night and had two death by coconuts and a tiramisu and a friend and a cinnamon rolled wake and bake, and I was like, yeah, Holy these shit. are all great. Yeah. And they are, but it's right. like, of course, I'm drinking, you know, Terrapin and Oscar Blues. That you can get anywhere. You can get those anywhere. Right. Um, you want to go and get something else, and it's like, you could probably get some sweet beers that are tiramisu or whatever flavored right. or cinnamon rolled flavored. Right. Go down to the local liquor store that has craft beer, and you can get that stuff from any brewery probably, but you uh -huh. won't do it because right. it's not Oscar Blues or Terrapin. Right. I mean, that's that a pri <laughs> that's a prime example of supply and demand. Right. You know, if, if Hetty Topper was available just like Lagunitas, you think would people lose their shit over it? No. No, I don't think so at all. Not but at they all. do because you can only get it, I think, at the brewery, like a st one store up there. And they, from what I hear, they're always out of it. You can never get it. I mean, same thing with Pliny. Like, we, we blind tasted Pliny, and I, I think Pliny came in third. I think Dogfish's 90 Minute came in second. Really? Yeah. 90? I love yeah. 90 Minute. So it's like, you know, is Pliny worth the hype? of either flying out to California or actually trading for it, you know, like, like David does. You know, are you willing to give up Hunapu? Are you willing to get up, give up Marshall Zukov for a bottle of Pliny of the Elder? Probably not. I mean, for me, no. Definitely not for me. I'm not a crazy IPA person. I like my, I like my multi beers. Or, I mean, would you give away, I don't know, like um, Hunapu for a six-pack of Firestone Walker? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Depends how many Hunapus it, you have. Right. It will depend on <laughs> what, what you're getting from Firestone Walker. Right. Too. So it's, it's, it's supply and demand. And that's, I mean, so it's just a fact of craft beer, you know. Just mm -hmm. ter people don't look high on Terrapin because you can get it literally at the 7-Eleven. But yet, it's Hedy Topper. Stuff, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all quality. And it's hard to not look at name. <coughs> to, you know, to say, oh, well, Lagunitas is, you know, I could get it anywhere, so it's not special. It's like, no, Lagunitas is solid. Once you once you have like the upper echelon of beers like the Heady Top or the Plant, you realize that it's like there's not much different. Right, it's just the name, just the name and availability. Mm -hmm. So you think you think uh, the Double 
would be on a rotation if he opened a brewery. Yeah, I think you should put it on. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a. I think it's I a think good it's beer. Good. I think it's very good. I think you have a good solid seasonal, these are, these are and you have good. a good and you have a good core. Yeah, very. Yeah, these are very good. Uh, one thing I noticed about Press's homebrew as we're wrapping up here is they're all relatively light, and I don't know how to make them heavier in terms of body. Well, what's good about light is that's kind of the way things are moving in craft beer anyway is you yeah. want to have a drinkable beer that has a lighter mouthfeel what's great about both of these is that they are lighter in mouthfeel but not in flavor right so that's not a bad line to walk no especially in florida when christmas was 86 um, degrees i know so it's like if you want to have a double or a or a gingerbread, gingerbread brown, brown. Ale that's light enough that you can drink it in the sun Go for Go it. Go for this it, yeah. It. This is and a state to do it. Still have full, and still yeah. have full flavor. It's a solid beer, yeah. both of them. Uh, yeah, so good job, Preston. So you got anything, anything <laughs> is plug time. You can plug it, plug it anywhere. What you guys got going plug on Plug it anywhere. Um, you guys got some new things rolling out. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. We just went through the holidays. Happy holidays to everybody. And, and New Year's, obviously, was last night. And I'm still recovering from that. But um, <laughs> I hope you guys had a safe and, and good New Year. Uh, basically, I mean, the only new thing, really, that we haven't ever talked about, the kitchen's still rolling good. We are now doing $5 burger nights on Monday nights. That's actually all day. You can come out That's and get a $5 awesome. hamburger or cheeseburger with french fries, tater tots, or coleslaw with it all for 5 bucks. It's that's awesome, really good. Really good burgers. That's a really good deal. And uh, we're not we're not changing out the meat patties or anything like that that you get at other restaurants. It's right. the same burger you get any other day, just for five dollars instead of That's a fucking instead great of nine deal. or ten. So yeah, um, it's, it's good half price essentially. Pretty much, and I mean, dude, uh, we, we had people come out last Monday. People getting two, three of these things throughout the day. They're coming out and watching Monday Night Football. They get another burger. It's just it's crazy. But I mean, I mean you could get a quarter pounder at McDonald's for six six and change. And it's fattening. It's cheap food, greasy. Get like, a nice big burger here for five bucks with fries. Yeah, with and fries. And everything's tots. fresh, man. So yeah, that's uh, that's the one thing we got going on. Really different. Um, still doing our our Wabu on Wednesdays. It's still doing very well and uh, <laughs> having fun with it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, all all the same, all the same stuff around these parts. Cool. Well, we are wrapping up. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to we made we made some, we made some new friends Jeff. We got I don't know if he wants to, if he wants me to say his name, but Florida beer Florida beer blog is a new friend of the show. Okay, all right. So he's he's supporting the show. He's listened to what we've done. He's he's actually really likes it. Um, he's listened to it. Uh, Red Cypress, from what I've I've heard uh, been told, listened to it. And one of the brewers at Two Henrys listened to our our okay, shows. Awesome. They all really like it. They all agree. It surprises course, me because I'm not that I'm not that smart or good at talking. So, well, you're doing pretty good. So they all, they all, <laughs> they all I've been in email contact with them for the last month, which is one of the reasons why we haven't done a show that and the holidays. And I graduated college. <laughs> so I'm finally Congratulations! Thank you. So it's been I've been busy working, you know, not making an episode, but networking. So they all really like it. They think we're, we're, we know our shit. They think we're good. And of course, our biggest fan, Preston. Thanks, Preston. So um. I expect some. I don't know if I know my shit. I know stuff. You know, well, you know your shit. <laughs> You're all right. You do all right. But um, yeah. So f- check out Florida Beer Blog. I'll put I'll put a link in the in the uh, the video in the description. Cool. Check him out. He does. He pre- he pretty much does what David Boston does, except he just writes about it. So which is cool. So if you want your beers written about, he does a lot of cool shit. A lot of beers that are hard to get, and he's out of South Florida. So oh nice. That's a whole, that's a whole another wilderness of craft beer. Yeah. Jay Wakefield. Some they've limited, got, limited got funky Buddhas down, down there, due south. He, he gets all that stuff. So check him out. Tell him we sent you. And once again, Happy New Year's. Hope you guys had fun. Thanks for listening and or watching. And until next time. Oh, man, I didn't get to make the see you next year joke because it's already New Year's. Say it. You can say it. Uh, see you next year, guys, or something. <laughs> I don't know. I made that joke like 19 <laughs> times yesterday. Were you the one that told me about the piece of Yeah, well, that was you the piece of joke. Yeah. I get people every time. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but see, we'll have a whole episode well, about, about <laughs> shitty dad jokes. I've got a ton. Okay. We'll, we'll have a special <laughs> episode of Jeff, Jeff and his shitty dad jokes. But uh, thanks again, guys, for watching your support, and we will see you guys next time.